We are in for a crochet treat today with this fun and quick clutch bag pattern. Um, I've kind of got one worked up here, but we're going to talk about uh, the different steps we're going to take to complete this. So this is a really quick project. It's great for gifts. It's great for yourself. It's great for matching your wardrobe or your outfits for whatever colors you like to wear the most. And it, I know we see a lot of things going on here, but we're going to talk about these supplies. So number one, you're gonna need some yarn. I will be doing the color theory two of wands today. Now normally if I'm doing a clutch that I'm not lining, I would pick a cotton weight yarn for that. But since we're lining it, I'm going to be using this acrylic and I'm going to be using these two tones that work a little bit better on camera and that is the nutmeg and the bone. And uh, these complement each other nice as a neutral clutch. So I'm only gonna be using two colors, but as you can see, you can rotate through many colors if you want to create a colorful clutch if that is what you want to do and that's what i did here and i i know i'm going to absolutely adore this one as well you will also need a size g crochet hook a four millimeter stitch markers are always a good idea with any pattern a yarn needle to even those ends tape measure because we might need that when it goes to comes to cutting the canvas for this and then some scissors to snip your yarn. Fabric scissors are also great because we're going to be cutting some fabric. And then fabric glue, if you are like me and you broke up with your sewing machine or you just despise hand sewing. Um, I'm gonna use some fabric glue today to uh, attach this, but you, the steps will be the same just when it comes to placing the fabric on the inside. You can use glue or you can use another method. You can bust out your sewing machine or you can use a uh, needle and thread. And that's why I have this canvas here. We will be creating a lining for this with a canvas fabric. Now this is a little bit of a thicker fabric. It's very sturdy. It doesn't have stretch to it. And that's what we want to do when we are working something that we want to have structure. And then last but not least, we'll need to be able to close the top of our clutch. I found some closures on Amazon. I'll link those in the pattern that I think will be fun to use. And if you want, you can also add on tassels or you know a, a wristlet strap for this. Um, you could even attach, if you wanted to, a longer strap and wear this as a crossbody. You could do that from each side. Completely up to you. But either way, this is a great accessory for so many outfits. And let's go ahead and dive right in. We're gonna start with creating the fabric for our clutch. Now today I'm going to be rotating between two colors. This will be my color A and the lighter one will be my color B. But the way the pattern is written is simply in, in colors A and then B, but you'll see that there's quite a few colors here. That's because every time you change color, your accent color is just gonna be labeled color B because the color changes are completely up to you. So you can um, work, the color A is this main cream color, and then this would be the color B, which would bl be blue. And then we've got the color A, and when we come to this one, this will be labeled the color B, but you're just gonna use whatever color you want for that repeat. And this is a simple four row repeat. To get started, we are going to place a slip knot onto our hook and then we will chain 37. If you want to, you can do a foundation double crochet of 37 stitches. The stitch repeat for this stitch pattern is six plus one. We are going to work right into that very first chain from the hook. I like to work into those back humps and we're going to start with what's called a stacked single crochet. We're gonna start this stitch as if we're working a single crochet stitch, but we're not gonna stop there. We're going to go back into this left side loop, insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through two. And we can go ahead and mark that stitch as the first stitch of the row. You wanna make sure to mark the top of that stitch, because as you can see, it looks like a stitch on the side and we don't wanna work into that. This helps us have straighter edges. I just like the clean look of it. And now we are simply going to double crochet into the remaining stitches of this row. So just double crochet into each stitch across. Now at the end of row one, we will have 37 stitches and that will be our stitch count throughout the pattern. Now after working double crochet stitches for row one, we're going to turn our work and we're still gonna be starting with our color A. We're going to create a stacked single crochet into the very first stitch. And then if you need to, go ahead and mark it. And then we're going to be working between the first two stitches of the row. So we're gonna be working in the spot down here and we're going to double crochet two. But when we get to uh, our second stitch here of the double crochets, we're gonna stop 
before this last yarn over. And this is how we're going to change colors. This is when we're going to bring in the color B. And we're going to do that yarn over with the color B. And now we're set up to work our next set of stitches with our next color. We're going to skip the next three stitches and work between the next two. And we'll be working three double crochets. So every single time we do the granny stitch, we're working groups of double crochets. And now that I'm on my third stitch, we're going to be switching back to our color A. So we'll want to yarn over and pull that through. And then notice on the back of the work, I've carried our color A across the color B. And that's what we want to do. We want to carry this on the wrong side of our work every single time we're carrying the yarn. So this is the right side of our work. This will be the wrong side of our work and we want to make sure that we carry it. Now we don't want to pull it too tightly because we don't want our fabric to be compromised. We want our fabric to, to still be with a nice drape that's intended. So you want to make sure that it's a little bit loose. It doesn't have to be too loose, but you want to make sure it's a little bit loose. And then we're going to skip three stitches and between the next two stitches, we're going to do three double crochets. And we're going to change back to that color A. And this is just going to be our repeat across. We're going to work between these two colors until we get to the end of this row. And I'll show you how to finish out this row. Now working to the end of the row, here's the last time we'll change colors for this row. And we're going to skip two stitches and then we will double crochet into that last stitch. And we're ready to turn our work, but our next row is going to be worked in the color B. So before we finish off row one, we'll want to do that last yarn over with the color B. And now we're ready to turn our work. At this point, we can fasten off color A because when we reattach it, we'll be attaching it on the other side. So we can fasten that off and we'll weave in these ends later. So for row three, we're going to start with a stacked single crochet with the color B. And then in this very first space, we are going to double crochet two. And then in the next space, we are going to double crochet three, but notice I'm working underneath those carried floats from before. So whenever you work into a space doing these three double crochets on the wrong side of your work, we will want to work below any of those strands that are floating across the back of our work. It helps secure them. It makes them uh, less in length to each other. And so notice here, especially with this color, it's kind of blocking that space. We want to go underneath any carried yarn into that space. It opens up that space as well as helps lock in that carried yarn a bit better. So we're going to work the color B all the way across for row three. Now, as we get to the end of row three, we will simply double crochet into that very last stitch of the row. Now, because we are going to be starting with a new color, we will want to switch to the color A. So we're going to join the color A through that last yarn over. And then we're going to turn our work. Now, this row is a repeat of row two. So we're simply repeating what we did for row two, starting with a set stacked single crochet in the first. And then double crocheting two into that very first space. And then we're simply going to carry our yarn around here for the color B. And then we will three double crochet into the next space. And we're just going to keep repeating what we did for row two all the way across. And now we can start row five and row five is simply working in the color B, the color A. So we can fasten off the color B and turn our work. And we're only going to be working for row five, the color A. And now the fun thing about this is we have done all the skills we need to complete the crochet portion of this clutch.
And after completing row five, we have done the repeat that we need. So the repeat to keep on going with is rows two, three, four, and five. So we're just gonna keep repeating rows two through five. We're going to repeat this five more times to get the size we need. But of course, if you want a clutch that has a bit more height to it once folded, then you can add more rows if you would like. Now that we have worked all the rows needed for this, we are going to do a slip stitch around. So when we finished our last row, we still need to go ahead and turn. And with the right side facing us, we are going to um, chain one and then slip stitch across all of these stitches along this edge. And when you get to the corners, we are going to slip stitch, chain two. I like to chain those kind of tightly. By chaining two, it creates a crisper corner. And then we're gonna go back into the same space and slip stitch again along that edge. And now we're gonna slip stitch all the way down this edge, placing two slip stitches per double crochet row. But it, the most important thing is to keep this nice and even. This is just to make the edge look really nice and crisp. So if you need to adjust how many stitches you're doing per edge to do so, feel free. We just want it to lay nicely and have a really nice edge look. And then we're gonna keep doing that all the way around, remembering to slip stitch, chain two, slip stitch on the corners, and we'll work all the way back to the beginning. After working all the way around, I'm not going to fasten off yet, but this moment right here is a great moment to take this and block it. That way it evens it out to be just perfect for when we are ready to line it. In order to line this bag, you will need to cut out a piece of fabric and you will wanna cut it slightly larger, at least a quarter of an inch larger than your fabric for the clutch. And that's because uh, if you're using the canvas fabric, it can fray on the edges. And so we wanna prevent that and get a really nice clean look. So you'll simply take your uh, fabric that you've cut and fold down all of the sides. This way, any edges that may fray will be kept on the inside. And it's a good idea if you have a sewing machine or if you wanna hand stitch this to stitch this down. Um, I'm simply gonna use glue because I do not like sewing once again. So I'm gonna use glue and just do a nice bead along here and get that um, so that it stays in place. Now, if you are using glue, it's a good idea to let it sit for a while and you can take a book and place it on there, a big heavy book. This is a great one, by the way. And let it sit uh, for a while so that that glue really takes hold. Now this lining is for the inside of the bag. So even though the glue kind of shows through here, it's not a big deal because once again, this is on the inside, we're not gonna see it. So perfection does not matter here, which is awesome. We're gonna have the wrong side of our work facing us. And we're gonna take this fabric with the right side of the fabric facing us and we're gonna place it onto our clutch. And this is where you can either stitch it, you know, sew it, or once again, use fabric glue and um, place this on the inside. Next, we are going to be folding this clutch to be the shape it will be. And you can play around a little bit with this and experiment to see how much fold over you want. You wanna be conscious of any hardware you're putting on here to make sure that you have room for that and you have the look that you want for that. So you can adjust this to be you know, more on the bottom, less on the top. It's really whatever you want it to be. You just wanna make sure that you get it in place how you want. And then this is where we're going to go ahead and start working from the yarn that is still attached. We are going to be slip stitching these sides together. So we'll first do it on this side, keeping track of how many stitches that we're doing. And then you're gonna do the same thing on this side so that it's even across. Now, once you've got this in place, you can chain one. And then we're going to be working from these sides, slip stitching them together through the back loop only on this side and the front loop only on the other side. So we've chained one and I'm going to go through the back loop of the yarn on this side. And then I'm going to go to my stitches on this side and we are going to go through the front loop. And then we're going to yarn over and slip stitch those together. And then we're going to do that all the way down. So the back loop of the side closest to me, the front loop of the side that's farthest away, yarn over and slip stitch. And we're gonna do that all the way down until all of these stitches have been worked. Now that we have worked all those stitches, 
I am simply going to fasten off and weave in that end and then attach to the other side and do the same thing again. Now for our next steps, if you're adding hardware, which you will need to do something in order to close this, you can always do uh, a chain loop to a button where the loop will go over the button. Um, I'm choosing this hardware that I found on Amazon and I just want to make sure that I line it up. So we're going to line it up nice and neat, making sure everything's the same across and then grab your sewing kit or whatever sewing tools you have and you're going to stitch it to the, the um, clutch. I stitched through the canvas as well because that just reinforces it. And then when you're using that snap, you don't have to worry about pulling on that crochet fabric because it is attached to that canvas fabric and that will last longer and add a better durability. So I'm going to grab uh, my needle and thread here and then stitch on this other side through those grooves through all the layers. And once you have those clasped on there, this is ready to use. I love this because it does fit the size of a cell phone. And I can also throw my ID in there, some lipstick, and then close it and go. And I'm thinking about even adding a wristlet onto here so that I can just hang it from my wrist. And the canvas inside really helps support the fabric so that it doesn't stretch. You can create this in so many different colors. Of course, I'm addicted. I'll be creating quite a few. I really enjoyed the process of this as a small project. Um, I'm sure yours might look better on the inside if you're a sewer. I'm not, so I don't mind. It's really, it's not gonna show when I'm going out and about. This is great for going out for a coffee date or a quick dinner. And it also makes a gift, especially a last minute gift. If you wanna give it to someone special, you can even throw a gift card inside of it if you wanted to, to their favorite place. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more fun projects soon.